All right. Hi, everybody. Hello. Happy Friday. I'm way too tired. It was an intense <laughs> week, but we're glad to be here. I'm Daniel. And I'm Tamsin. And our guest is... Ted Hearn. Yes, Ted Hearn. Hey. Hello. Thank you for being here. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, so we're all hot boys talking on a show. Yes. Um, every week in this show... Hot Boys Talk Show, we ask people what they do, so we're going to keep that the same. So, Ted Hearn, can you talk us through what you do, describe yourself, and what kind of music you make, and all of that? What kind of music? Oh, my God. Okay. Well, um, thanks for having me. It's lovely to see you. Big fan of the show. Um, I don't know. I'm a composer. I'm an artist. I'm a... I I use the word band leader sometimes, Um, Mm -hmm. but... um, really like about collaborating in groups with people and uh recording artists i like using that um because i feel like i'm interested in (laughs) i'm interested in recorded music i'm interested in making music that lives in that way Mm. um and yeah i mean i feel like i'm i'm motivated more and more by like music as a reflection or music as a um a way of like like a, like a sense of inquiry or something, a sense yeah. of like uh, get chewing on uh, something. Yeah, hmm. yeah, and like you know how I mean I mean I'm very interested in like reference and association with music and mm. and you know how um, how the how the abstract element of music lives with the um, you know the the specific and sometimes very personal associations that like go with someone's personal blueprint. So thinking yeah. about like playing with those things in sound and in music and in like sort of pseudo theatrical pieces. Um, and that could be not a piece in a theater that could be like a recorded work, but sort of engaging with self reflection of self and reflection of community in that way or something, you know? Um, Mm. yeah. Yeah. And it seems like you have projects that are like at the same time an album, but also like a performance, um, or like they, take different shapes at times um does it seem like recently you've been favoring one over the other does it just always end up starting with an album and then going to performance or no i mean i I think it's evolving i i mean i was having a talk with a friend last night just about the album in general and like you know is that i mean i think you know recorded music is you know is is like a, a vital form but i mean is the album itself like really doing it anymore or is it like you know i i don't know um i'm i'm sort of excited to see like how releasing things in succession can be like a part of a that how that can be a larger project you know and mm. it doesn't necessarily have to be like summed up into one album but mm. recently in the last few years i've certainly been like yeah i've been thinking about i've been thinking about the album as like the final point of a project or something you know mm-hmm. but um but then i sometimes that's contradicted i don't know i, I feel like with place, which which yeah. um, I know we should talk about, like at some point, like the um, or what you want to talk about the um, the album actually is not the final product. Yeah, you know? and like it or the or the or the, you know I don't know if there is a final, but um, but I did learn things about the piece after making the album. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, Yay! Great! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! The stuff I said in the break was so smart. I'll never get it back. <laughs> We'll, well, um, we'll edit it in somehow. I don't what know. did you say about USC? <laughs> <laughs> it was all, it was just all gossip. Straight, straight so straight. I think maybe, did we cut out just <clears throat> kind of talking about the project place? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Talking about the project, talking about, you know, just like how, how it, it you know, it, was, it very, started from a very broad place, just thinking about like my relationship to the neighborhood and stuff. Um, but really inspired by like reading, uh, I said James Baldwin, Claudia Rankin, and um, Eula Biss. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, the idea of I don't know there was, there was, there was the idea of the identity of white identity and and um, how you know how as a white person I was you know raised to not think about myself as white at all <laughs> or like consider any yeah. of that right mm-hmm. and uh, and like what is, you know what is the impact of that and how does that impact um, my life and my relationship to the location that I live in that was sort of like the the, the original frame. And um, 
so I asked um, I asked the poet Paul Williams a few years later after I, I worked with him um, on a project with the Amigos Quartet, um, with the amazing series Liquid Music in Minneapolis. It's so great. And they so they this woman um, Kate Nordstrom who curates that series um, who is incredible, like paired me with Saul Williams to write a piece, which was like such an honor. And, um, yeah, yeah. And uh, we hit it off, and then I asked him if he wanted to collaborate on this piece. Mm. Um, he said yes, and then also um, there's a director named Patricia McGregor, who's a fantastic theatrical director, who um, I met, and it turned out that we had been neighbors in New Haven for a minute, and hmm. uh, we, you know, had the same sushi restaurant that we loved, and we loved the guy who ran the place, and we hit it off, and asked her if she wanted to direct the piece, and then it sort of became that we, like, three of us, sort of conceived of the form of it together. So um, what we decided on was that I was going to start by writing text, which was scary. Um, yeah. And whatever that would be would be sort of like the first iteration of the of the piece. And then I would hand that off to Saul and he would respond to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would set some of the music and then Saul would write more and we would um, you know, finish it together somehow. Um, but like just the, 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 the I wanted the, we wanted the, the the process of dialogue to be worked into the form in that way so that you could sort of so, so like me setting my own words and then setting his response to my words was like the order was kind of like you know yeah um, early on curious about that um why don't we play um a bit of a long longish segment that's actually the bridge between the first section and the second section which would be the end of of Ted's libretto, basically, in the beginning of Saul's. Yeah, cool. And you're going to play the video, yeah? Yeah, so this is also, this is the video of the, the quarantine edition, which maybe afterwards we can talk a bit about what went into putting this together and what the team was like and how that, because, you know, there's a, there's a bit of a rocky history in, on um, putting this piece on, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And also, so I'll say that this is... Um, this was filmed when, like, right at sort of right at the beginning of COVID times, mm -hmm. um, end of March and in early April, and um, <laughs> that's a perfect still. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's he's singing plays, but he's listening to like Michael Bolton. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, but um, I can't live without you. <laughs> but he is. Uh, but no, but um. But these are these are the, the performers that were that were supposed to perform um, at the West Coast premiere, which was which was scheduled to happen in the, it was like in, in the first week of when everything was canceled. Mm. You know, I was like, man, it's so unlucky that this happened to me. And then it like happened. Yeah, to everybody. yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, right? But but um, but they all the, the, but everyone was was very much homebound. So um, mm. so all the singers, but we had just recorded the album, so we they all everyone had like tracks basically. So they recorded. Yeah. Um, they, they recorded live performances um, and filmed themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so this is everybody singing live, actually, but the tracks are from, from you know, studio sessions. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, let's get this going. Fast. Thank <laughs> you. Man, did Can't I not hear your computer sound? God. I think maybe it, yeah. It's, <laughs> okay. Oh my God. This, this is. How long have you been doing this? This, <laughs> this should have been the first show. Like, I know. what the hell is wrong with that? Okay, yeah, let's, yeah. let's try this again. One more time. Your computer sound. <laughs> Optimize screen sharing for video clip. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. 
So <laughs> still it's good. Is it okay to say? Oh. Is it okay to say? Oh. Is it okay to say? Is it okay to say white supremacy in white spaces? Can we get to the bottom of this? Is it okay to say bottom? Is it okay to say? 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 I not welcome here. Is it okay to say welcome? Uh, is it okay to say? Uh, is it okay to say? Uh, am I okay? 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 Is it okay to say I did not, not make these rules? Is it okay to say sorry and do it anyway? Is it okay? Uh, is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay to let some anger show? Is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay? What about my son? 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 Okay. Yeah. That's a really... I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that's a nice next section there we wish we could play more but i think that gives us a sense maybe of like some of the oh yeah, world. yeah yeah sure yeah 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 and it's the you know you um it's the that's the end of the first part and the beginning of the second part so it's the it's the end of the the text that i wrote in the beginning of saul's response um and yeah and you know you, you it starts right at that um well you stopped right at this this movement what about my son and um <clears throat> saul said actually that's the first thing that he I think yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. And in the album, right, the beginning of your text talks about you and your son and kind of watch it like that's like the beginning of your text, so it seems like it would make sense that that's sort of the beginning of this like right. other section. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I mean and it's it's like Todd Saul is so um smart and yeah. great poet. But like um yeah, you know I as I said, I was I was I was thinking about Baldwin and just that he there's a lot in in his writing in the fire next time that is like <clears throat> speaking to um, you know like 
be like you know whiteness being uh, something that was like governing like every action, right? And that the and that it's not just about you know it's like because of because of not um, because of like living the fantasy that your identity is not politicized and because of like living the fantasy that you that you oh I can oh you know what I'm trying to like bang down before money had to come because of living <laughs> because of living the uh, <laughs> classic shy. doom just the whole thing it's like yeah no but because <laughs> yeah, because because of like um, sort of uh, living mm-hmm. in the um, with with the, with the fantasy that you you can you, you have a neutral perspective or that your or that your identity is not at play in every interaction mm. that you're not just you know well first of all of course like you know being white is is mostly defined as being not black right and but then but then also that like it's not like you it's not like that creates a border between just between you and the not white people it creates a border between you and everybody because you have no you have no like realistic sense of you have the porousness of the boundary and you have no sense of how you define yourself with relationship to other people right mm-hmm. so because of that like trying to start this piece and then given the pressure of like well i actually you write text and give it to like one of the greatest living poets right <laughs> to talk about i was like well okay because of that it's actually actually it's like um the fam the family is actually really the most important place to start and mm-hmm. like yeah and 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 i mean um and I was getting divorced and I was just like, you know, my dad got divorced and like there's just layers and layers and layers in my family of patriarchy and misogyny and white supremacy, of course. Right. And like because of where, you know, who we are and just like when I see my son, it's like, do I see myself or do I see my father? Like that's that question. Right. But of course, it's not, you know, me, I'm like ruminating about it. But then, of course, Saul is like first thing is like, what about my son? Mm. Like, all right. You know, like. <laughs> enough you know enough and like um that that's such a um that was such a great like i don't know it was just i really appreciated that um and i think that and then but then you know those two movements the first two movements are not in the video because yeah it's kind of it's kind of absent i was yeah i think the context for what about my son you know where we sort of stopped is, is, is lost a little bit of course yeah and that and that is uh that was a that was I mean I agonized over that decision, but you know I really thought that it was a it was a it was a change that I had to make to um, <clears throat> to make it more communicative in the media because it's not it's not there's elements of that that are that are, I mean I'm very proud of that video, but it's not a professionally done video, right? Everyone's shooting on their phones and and I learned Premiere to like edit it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, it, and it's also like, we're all, more importantly probably, we're, we're watching it, you know, the way that we watch everything right now. And like, um, we're not in a space. And I think I wrote the, the piece, like, I, I had an idea of the structure of the beginning that would like be, that would unfold and would be slow and then would like get kind of tense and then it would be like too much. And it would be like, you know, because I because the last movement of my section is called Guilt and it, you saw yeah. him over there like, you know, and it's like, he's sort of doing that. But when we watch it in the video, it's like a half an hour into the piece. It's just like too much, you know. Mm-hmm. And so the length of it kind of determined that even though you're absolutely right, what about my son? Well, what is it? What is he talking about? You know, it's like he's not actually responding. Or anything else. But that's like that. What's a big way that those two, those two mediums are different. Two versions are different. Yeah. Between both of them, this I was wondering if you could talk about the decision to divide the piece in the same way that it happened like in the production of the libretto, like meaning your stuff happens in the beginning and then Saul's happens after as a response. And just what that does as a choice, like to make, um, cause they are in dialogue, but I guess because you, because the timing between them can be rather long, like you said, like a half hour, between when you're seeing the response of someone else, like what that does formally to the piece or how it's going to change how it feels. Um, yeah. Cause I feel like something happens like right when we, the moment that we shared, I feel like the, the focus of it shifts in a really specific way when Saul's words start becoming like the foreground. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about that? Yeah. 
totally. I mean, I agree that the focus really shifts. And I mean, that was a, that was a decision <clears throat> that we made that um, we continue to talk about, you know. And sometimes we still do. I mean, because you know, when if we do another performance, I mean, there's no reason you can't mix and match the movements or whatever. I mean, that could be really cool. The flow, though. I think ultimately I wanted to keep it the way it was because it was it was more it was more authentic to the process, like and I wanted to just the process of how we like actually happened to write the libretto and and also like I don't know I feel like the you know Saul put his words in an order and mm. he said I could do whatever but I did want to respect the order because I think the order is really yeah. good but then also I don't know I learned about the, I learned about the poetry in that order and hmm. i you know like i feel like my process my setting of his text in a certain order like helps me understand the next text and i wanted that to reflect the I, I wanted that that element of the dialogue to be reflected in the form but it does um i mean it does make it well i don't know i think it brackets it in a way that you sort of have to experience the whole work if you're if you're gonna get some of it, I mean, I think there's a couple of, like singles or whatever that like you know are more accessible, but there's a lot of it where it's like you either sit for the thing or you don't, or you like digest it entirely and then you understand it, you know. Um, and there are some some tracks where it's like, well, this makes so much more sense in the context of that order. And if and if we had split them up and put you know part two and part one on top of each other, you know, um, also part one without anything else is like. Is like a real problem, I think. You know, like, yeah. um, and and uh, you know, at, to be isolated. And there may be, you know, I mean, I like the music and stuff, but like the whole, just as a, the larger context of it. I mean, I don't, I don't know. So, so um, I wanted to ask about sort of um, how you how you saw your your music in parts two and three in relation to. Saul's text if it was sort of setting if it was sort of a continued conversation because like I gotta say the 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 sort of the theme at the beginning of part two gets really stuck in my head the na -da 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 -da. and I love it because it's it's to me it feels almost kind of it's mixed in a way that feels like kind of nauseous but also eager and then maybe a little bit like nervous there's there's so many different colors in it and that sort of made me think like well what parts does if there are any parts this head feel are like like your response to Saul's words in if you've sort of made that distinction in different sections mm. well i think that they all they all are i mean mm. they're like every musical decision i think is a response to the <clears throat> to the text i mean sort of like like a per like it's hard because obviously like when you set text you're responding to it but there's a i think sort of a difference to me at least for like sort of removing yourself a bit and like trying to serve the text specifically as opposed to like this is how i feel about it mm -hmm. um does that make sense yeah 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 for real i mean and it's but it's that that is especially that was especially difficult with this because it is such a it's such a personal piece um and I think, I don't know. I mean, there's no, it, you know, one, one of the questions is like character, in the piece, right? And like, because, um, and this is, this speaks to what Daniel thinks too, also, like, just because it's, it started with such a, like, internal circling, um, yeah. you know, and then, and then, and then it becomes a conversation. And then, and this is something that we had we had thought about at the very beginning, and then it like really begins to like stand out. And I, because I feel like the the beginning has these elements of like Saul talking to Ted, the beginning of what Saul wrote. But but toward the end of you know it's not it's not really about that. It's re I mean the whole thing of course is for the audience or something, but like later it really stands out. And and um, and then in the end he goes to space, you know, colonizing space. I mean it's like sci-fi. You know, mm -hmm. um, futurism, and like, and like, uh, so, so that does like, I don't know, that that's just again, you have to sit for the whole thing. But I got, I got distracted, but I feel like, or I got uh, the sultry, but I feel like you were, you were saying, is it like, is it a personal response to music, as elements of that, or like that that one part? And uh, 
I don't know how to, I just don't know how to disconnect exactly. Like, yeah. I don't, you know, decouple them. Like, um, and honestly, I feel that way. I think I feel that way about studying all time. I think, like, I think that it's, I'm, like, so not interested in, like, trying to create, a, like, a neutral setting of a text. Or not, it wouldn't be neutral, but, you know, yeah. something that's, like, so distanced that it, like, serves whatever the text is. I mean, I feel like serving the text and, like, serving the, the pieces interpretation of the text are, like, the same. Yeah, on a on that note, maybe then we can look at. Um, I thought it'd be really nice to look at the section called a thought because that's maybe more of like potentially a little bit less of a filtered look at what Saul Williams' poetry is like. Yeah. Um, but before that, maybe just I want I wanted to ask like, do you f- what do you feel like are his kind of particular critiques of the way? your libretto tackled the issue of gentrification um maybe just for the listeners because i feel like it is pretty evident when you watch the piece but for you like what did you see it as critique or was it like expanding the conversation to something beyond maybe what you initially had started the project looking at you know because to me it seems like as you said it it just like blooms into a conversation about colonialization and yeah outer space and a future that deals with these things and it deals with history but yeah yeah, what, yeah. What do you well think? i mean you know like um uh saul is someone who has this just this, this massive knowledge and massive amount of, of contextual con- contextual ability you know like and mm-hmm. so so we'll use this just consciously like consciously constantly using words with double and triple entendres and using words that like tie things together in such a great way, right? And like, and you know, I mean, the word gentrification is associated with this piece. There was a, you know, I think Spike Lee's like quote unquote gentrification rant about Fort Greene happened, you know, shortly after I lived there, or like when, when I when I lived there, and like that that was part of a it was there was something in there that that made me think about the piece. But mm-hmm. but from the very beginning, we were both like, you know, gentrification is like a very surface level word you know mm-hmm. yeah and like and and um and kind of a racist word if you think about just the just the just the etymology of it right? I mean, like, yeah. free who, right but like um but like uh but that you know and, and saul like and this is like i mean i think he's like this with so many things you know it was immediately like well let's like just like look you know this is like a this is part of like 10 larger much larger patterns and it's about capitalism and it's about colonialism every, you know i mean it's like and and also I kind of like that sushi place that that came that was moved into yeah. Brownsville. I'm like you know why you know whatever like there's like so that was that's been a part of it and that was sort of from the get go like the idea of like sort of challenging that um, you know the like the simple the simple narrative or the neoliberal narrative around gentrification you know? but but um, but mm. the I don't know I mean the the takeaway of just like as much I mean I felt like as much as I was, and Eula, Eula Biss says this, like, you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of, I'm aware, and I'm aware of my awareness, but I'm like, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not aware that, like, I, like, I, like, I, I'm aware that my awareness is not enough at all, right? And, like, that's, how far can you get circling that way? And I sort of thought I was aware, but then it's like, you know, the, how much can, can you center yourself in this conversation? What does it mean to, like, get out of that? Um, I'm, I mean, I'm proud of, like, of, of the, like, of having this collaborator who is willing to, like, do that and is willing to, like, see that and then find a way, help us find a way together out of it, you know, not to be, like, kumbaya about it, but, like, I mean, that was, I knew something that that was going to happen, but I also wasn't aware of the, of, of, of how much that is, you know, and then actually because of the response, then it's, like, very, that of course colored like how then we treated the text and how we and how we said it and like the and then there was a shape to the text that became clear to me clearer to me you know which really is about like circling narcissism of mm-hmm. you know thinking about racism and whiteness you know hmm. and um and the you know the the illusion of like i am no i'm thinking about moving forward i'm thinking about moving past but how much am I actually like moving in a circle? You know? 
yeah it's interesting how like that feedback loop of um any level of privilege kind of like continues a conversation about yourself in a way that loses sight of even trying to connect and relate to a larger structure and i feel like that's what saul's work um in the piece does is like brings us to a conversation about um how this land was why we're here like why americans are here and it's not an yeah it's like um i don't know i feel like it's at what what it makes me think is that it's like his his poetry helps us say like it's okay that we all have different access points to this land we have to figure out what they are though and that's the process or that's what the poetry draws us to is like what is the history what what aren't we saying um but yeah i don't know maybe do we want to look at that it's very generous poetry because it doesn't it doesn't uh hold like it doesn't it doesn't hold your hand and it doesn't and it doesn't like make any easy answers but um but it does it does allow for different perspectives it's, and it, it's, it's it's somehow combative and like warm and generous you mm. know um yeah and 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 you know just to go back to your thing about the, about the ordering like the i think the biggest thing was trying to get that sense of like this actually is too much you know because there's a way of like the you know the part one stuff could keep coming back and it could be like now we go into like droll maudlin land again and whatever and that that would communicate something, but it's almost too easy. Like you, you, the audience should actually really sort of like sit in it, and I get embarrassed sitting in it every time, you know. Like, and then you know. So, anyway. hmm. why don't we listen to some salt? <laughs> yeah, and and this is this is from the video, a, a thought, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So so this is performed by the incredible Ayana Wood. Yeah, I think there's a little bit beforehand, but hopefully. I get this freaking right this time. <laughs> Didn't rain it. I thought. I thought. Gentrification is. Gentrification is a generational conversation that has gone by, by many, many names. names. We should not discuss what brings you back to the city without acknowledging why you left. White flight, white flight, white flight. Now that winter is over. Now that winter is over, you're flying back. Will you bring your old viruses with you? Will you, you push, push us away? away? Are you capable of playing and living with others? Or will you find reasons for every same honorable reasons for pricing us out, for placing us in camps, prisons, squats, erasure? I'd rather not talk about it. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't want to talk about history. Migration. 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 Um, migration. Not gonna finish the movement. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we can do that. <laughs> That's just what we said. It's just a teaser. It's a teaser. Just a teaser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and that um, that you know that's that's Diana performing, obviously, but then also Saul, you hear Saul's Saul's yeah. spoken word, and he, yeah, that's from right after he wrote uh, Libretto, and he, um, I asked him if he would just record himself um, like reading. Both so I, I read in an interview um, with Saul that he he was very he he very much wanted to be librettist for this project. He didn't want to be a performer in it. He wanted to be able to sit back and and take it in. Um, and I was just curious because he he said in the interview that that you and sorry, what was the name of the Patricia? He's like they keep trying to get me to do it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I read that. I was like, oh, that's how you felt, huh? I mean, but like, um, but I think he was, I, well, I, actually, I don't know. I mean, uh, we, we weren't like hounding him, but, but he didn't, he also wasn't like, no, I will not do this. You know, I mean, he, like at, 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 in the, for the performance at BAM, which we did in 2018, he was like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. And it was, it was great. But then we were um, completely revamping and, you know, will for the next time it's performed live, if ever, 
change, you know, we're revamping the production. And for that, we were like, oh, like, could we, like, would it be cool to have you on video or whatever? I mean, we just were like, oh, you, you, um, he's an amazing performer. You know, like, you need yeah. Him, right? Um, and, uh, and, and he, he always just sort of like politely did work, you know? He wasn't like, I don't want to do that. He was just kind of like, and then with this video, I mean, we talked a lot about this video and, um, you know, all the singers are making the stuff and we were, just, and I was just like, um, you know, uh, it would be so amazing to have you in there and like, you want to, you know, do this stuff. And he's like, yeah, 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 I would. I mean, he basically was like, sure. Yeah, I would. And, and, and it was like, you know, what, he was like, what, which one would you like? Like, I'll see, you know, maybe I'll, I'll read one. I'll see what I think. But I think he just wasn't feeling it. And I think that, the, and you know, and then he didn't do it, you know? And it's like, okay. So that's, I mean, that's how he told me he didn't want to do it. And, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, like, um, it, it, it makes, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, like, why he wouldn't want to, you know? Yeah, um, I mean... And I think that, awesome. you know, and it's also, like, everybody who wants to wrap it up in a bow, um, who's involved in, like, the production team or, or whatever, is like, is like, but it would be so great if you had you and then Saul, because you're in the video, and, so, and it's like, yeah, yeah, that would spell it out, but also you kind of know that's what's happening in peace anyway, so oh. you, you, you need that. You know? mm. Yeah. Because you're 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 in it slightly more than than he is, but I guess you know Daniel was you were talking about how like you're also a great performer. Like why weren't you playing? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Live in a loud place. Um, Live in a loud place. <laughs> Live in a loud place. Um, da, 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 da. Live in a loud place. Yeah, well, I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, you know. Um, I don't know. I. I mean, it'd be very uncomfortable to play yourself in this. It would be, but yeah. I'm, I ducked it though when we do it live, and I wasn't going to, and then it ended up that I was doing it, and it felt really good because, you know, you can see the because there's somebody who's like sort of playing, me, right? I mean, and like that's Stephen Bradshaw. Oh, by the way, I should say Stephen Bradshaw and Sol Ruiz were singing the other, um, mm -hmm. the other movement. I didn't mention them because the feed got cut. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I forgot to mention. But um, I didn't mention it because it's all Daniel's fault. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe. And, and <laughs> and amazing performance. No, no. Um, but but uh, but no, but like I'm conducting there, and he is performing there, and we we're like a mirror, you know, and that yeah. like that that reflects the the whole process in a, in a way that's interesting. And then. Um, yeah, and then Saul isn't in it at all, and that I, that also like reflects the 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 this treatment of character, you know. And it's like there's, and that's part of the imbalance of the piece that is is tricky. But it's I think that's really essential to it, and that this is the big reason why it felt so good to do this video because, like, you know, all of the all of the like like at the beginning of the piece, you have this like six movements where. Everybody in the cast, well, Soul doesn't sing, but everybody else in the cast sings at the, in the beginning a bunch, but they kind of have a chorus role, you know? Yeah. And, and Stephen Bradshaw, like the Ted character or whatever, is like doing the ruminating, right? And so there's like this a strong character. And then like Saul's response is a response to me at the beginning, but then as you said, it like picks it out, right? So who are those people as characters? Like, are they, like, why don't, why don't they have the specificity? So... But it's because of the process. And like, so in a theatrical version, it can be tricky. Yeah. Because it's like, well, who, who is Sophia supposed to be? Like, like, maybe she's a nurse. And like, who's Isaiah supposed to be? Maybe, and it's like, no, that's totally not right, right? It's like, but we had to sort of like experiment with that to figure it out. But like in the video, it's like everyone's just themselves, you know? And like, there's something that, it's just much clearer. Like you're singing words, but then the, the intimacy of the camera being like them capturing themselves like seems to work really well for the piece and then like i mean um the the differences the the disparate nature of everybody's reality yeah. and the way that 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 like is amplified at the beginning of covid in a way that's really you know it's so stark like these are all members of the cast right they're they're all about to go do a gig at the la phil and like so one person like well, you know, two people that directly affected their financial reality. One of them got evicted because of it yeah. because they just weren't paying rent. They couldn't pay rent, and then they and then that person lived in Florida where there were like there was zero protections, and they were just out. So they filmed it, you know. So like, 
And we wanted, that to, was, we wanted it was a direct to relationship, and it's a piece that's like deliberately. It's, I mean, it's like it's like re, re, uh, dealing with this, you know. And then another 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 singer like had to start driving lips all the time, you know, like it, right at the beginning of the pandemic, you know. And it's like, but then, you know, I wasn't, you know, and some of the other people in the cast weren't, and then and then and actually that you can see that in the location, you know. So we wanted to ask actually about about Soul getting evicted and sort of what went into the process into deciding to like capture that very real thing happening uh, and use it in this video. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, of course. I mean, she, she, um, she. We were, you know, we were communicating a lot because we were. Making it. Recording, yeah, yeah, and it happened. And she told me she wanted to film it and put it in the video, and yeah, you know, and like um, the, you know, like it, it's like it's so it's it's so related to the topic of the piece and the poetry, um, and also it it seems like considering that, I mean. Maybe this is a little bit too sort of music politically like political of a question, but I'm just curious: were they were they like paid for the performances they couldn't do? No. See, but that's the thing that scares me about this is yeah. that like, well, maybe she would have been fine if the LA Phil. Yeah. Paid yeah. Maybe. Them. Maybe. I mean, no, exactly, exactly, and and and. Uh... Uh, they, you know, along with so many performing arts organizations, didn't they invoke force majeure? And like that means that, act of God, nobody gets paid. And you know, yeah, not, none of us got paid. And then, um, but Beth Morrison Productions, I will say, um, much smaller company. Yeah. They paid the singer. They couldn't pay the entire fee, but they they weren't the full producer. But they they paid like more than they were gonna anyway because. Of the situation, right? So they paid the singers some, and then they paid the singers again. Um, and uh, yeah, we, I mean, we paid the singers for this, obviously, too. Um, but, but, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think I wonder just one thing it, it makes me think about is how, and Saul's, Saul's poetry gets to this that there are structures beyond what one person one individual is capable of dealing with yeah that that beget gentrification but also um the colonialisms we live with now and the after effects of our history so like i i wonder if including the footage of soul being evicted although it sounds like it was something that was decided upon mutually as a group if that sort of um placing the visual um out there that the stakes are kind of different as a person creating a video about it um that are kind of like showing exactly the power dynamics that cause the possibility of gentrification if that makes sense i don't know this is me just kind of um, theorizing no, in the I mean, moment, yeah, but you know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, well, the, uh, yeah, like the power dynamics of like who's creating the video and on what platform and all that. Well, also just that you're okay, you know, that you have a place yeah. to live and that you have a choice. Um, you know, like there's a choice for you whether like this is almost like if it's too too raw to show somebody, it's not really you don't have to make the choice about you in this moment. It's, it's like, I, it feels almost like this person's situation that really like, um, clearly shows the paradigm you're talking about, uh, can be used as material in the work, you know? And yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, that's it's the like, power dynamic I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's problematic. I mean, we of course like talked about it a lot. I think, you know, I think my personal philosophy about it is, and this is related to like lots of, lots of uh, ways that I write rewrites. I think. I mean, the, my personal philosophy about it is that, you know, the 
um, the conversation has to be like really um, uh, mutual. The consent has to be mutual and like uncoerced, of course, and like the um, and that 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 choice, the choice of soul, is one to be like totally respected on that level of that person. Now, there is the question about like the ethics around it. I mean, you can like extrapolate out and it's like it's also in a way it's like maybe not only about soul either it's about like how this dynamic is represented or what that how this might affect the dynamic in general you know my opinion is that it is about the dynamic and that it is it is not it's it's not it's not poverty porn because it's like <laughs> because it's like these, this is actually this person it's not fabricated and also because it's not like trying to make anyone feel good about it but I also totally accept the how it is problematic and and how it may not be and may, it may make people feel bad about the work the ethics of the work or 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 other things you know yeah I guess I'm thinking about the reading of it that's kind of like the other thing that's in my mind is like how these things are presented and received by audiences and how in a way it kind of it treats when we treat the the subject matter um in this kind of like material way like how we use musical material it almost is like wow look at the look at the arc like the piece really mm -hmm captures gentrification because it shows it even like in the life of life like, but yeah. i don't think that's actually a virtue like that's the part that's a little strange to me but it feels like the kind of the um i would say maybe like you've mentioned neoliberal before but yeah i would say like the neoliberal take on it would be like wow this piece like caught that or like kind of reflects that thing so well because it can visually show it and exactly. i'm just wondering about the ways that um you know the re proliferation of these types of images of people in suffering might just actually perpetuate the suffering because it doesn't have a strong critique beyond just um like presentation in a way and i just think that even though the art, the opera, or the, you know, the um, libretto does mention these different structural issues, I don't know that it was really focusing on talking about people getting evicted or, like, if it all, like, kind of um, is in the spirit of showing, like, someone's real, like, documented life in a way. I don't know. These are questions that I've come up with seeing the Yeah, yeah. The I video. mean, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, but I'm, I have to say, like, these, this is the line of thinking that... This is, this is the line of thinking I was engaging in. And I have to say it's because I... Well, I mean, um, I think that, like... Um, I think that to be, you know... Uh, for me, and I think the responsibility of the artists in general, maybe, or many artists like is to um you know to be as conscious as possible to be as you know as, as, as ethical as possible yet um to to explore and to take risks in your work and to um to to answer the questions or not to answer the questions but to ask the questions that you don't even know how to ask you know and like and that and and because of that like things that are problematic are not always like It's not always a reason to like avoid because it might be problematic the choice. But then I will say, given all that, like, I, you know, I've written works in the past where I don't uh, like exactly I, exactly what you're talking about with the form of the work, like the arc, the form, the you know, wrapping it up, showing showing like communicating in this medium in the, in a way to a, which communicates to a certain audience in a certain way how that will like completely belie the topic or like the supposed like um, 
uh, you know, purpose or the or the ideology behind the work, and those things are at odds. And and I, you know, I've written works where I like didn't see it until later, you know, and it's like, and mm. and and uh, and that's disappointing. But also though, it's like okay because it's like this is the art. It doesn't need to be, you know, I don't need to like stand one hundred percent by every decision as as the art ages and as I age, you know. Um, but but I also would would push back a little bit and say that I I actually don't think, well, I don't think that the that the the video version, I don't think the, the version of the, the um, purpose of that is to exactly reflect the libretto as it was written a couple years earlier. Mm-hmm, I yeah. also don't think that the um, I also don't think that the form of it is so neat, and I think that it it's true that this event happens later, but I but and that and there there is some like formal narrative, um, you know, like tra- tradition that is adhered to in that, you know, and it, and. and and, and maybe it's a Western sensibility. Maybe it's a commercial sensibility. You know, like, and that's that's uh, that's that's true. That's true. But um, but I don't think that that undercuts the. I actually, I actually don't think that undercuts the message. Um, um, and I think that I think I think it's because of I think it's just because of who is actually because it is actually documentary. You know, because it is actually like everyone's everyone's life. And I'm interested in also just the way that like the singers made these choices to interact with the piece and interact with the word by by using the camera and by like performing in a certain way and setting themselves you know and like that tension between those things and it, it wouldn't have happened if they didn't have this like deep knowledge of the piece already because they performed it and then they like prepared yeah. it all again they're like all ready to go like that dynamic is interesting you know um but but i agree though it's like it is you know it is it is relating it is relating to that and there is that new effect on it and I don't know. I mean, how deep is it really? Maybe it is. You know, it's like we can have this conversation, but who's gonna like? That's this isn't the work. That's the work. And does that communicate that thing? You yeah. thought of it, so maybe it does. You know. Hmm. One thing that I, I definitely felt with, like, I had uh, talked to Daniel about this. He had heard about this footage, you know, being in there. So I was like, you know, not surprised, and I I knew that it was a real situation, but. I wonder how clear it is to someone watching that it is particularly documentary, you know, like someone could think like, Oh, they staged that, you know, um, (laughs) at the, at the end, I was actually kind of wondering if there was going to be some postscript to explain that that happened, you know, and to be like, of course, selfishly, I was like, is she okay? (laughs) Yeah. Like, um, yeah, um, She's okay, by the way. We, have, we have a question in the chat from the lovely Anna Vicalis. Um, but before we do that, I think we'd like to play, uh, actually <laughs> spoiler alert, the end. I just, uh, really love this music that happens at the end and selfishly want to show it off. <laughs> Let me get to the timestamp. Also, just like to show off Isaiah singing, so. Isaiah Robinson is the soloist in this last one. He's incredible. We've known him since high school. He's a great friend. And like, yeah, his, his voice is really good. Oh, 
your son. You are my everything. And if you fuck it up, I'll give you more. Do not kneel for the rockets. Do not kneel for the anathema. Recognize no boundaries. That is our law, our place among. Place your hands against the wall. Place your hands where I can see them. Place your hands amongst the stars. God, I love the way that he plays with the f the like meaning flips that happen in Saul Williams' <laughs> words. It's like, yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's such a good musician. God, it's like I used to, yeah, I used to write this like this, I don't know, this like dinky stuff for him back in high school, you know, and he would like sing it and like it, it sounded like his voice would be like so amazing, but he was always like. He would just like phrase and do these little tiny ad libs and everything, and they were always like would, every time we'd like teach him something because he was like, "Oh, I'm interacting with your tenor line," and then like I'm interacting with the, the drum or something, and it's like, "Oh yeah, you are, aren't you?" Like that's like you're just listening to everything and just like, yeah, it's mm. it's, it's really, really amazing. This is just a technical question: um, is in the score is there like room for people to ad lib in general as singers, or does it? kind of come down to like very specific notes uh in the score it's pretty specific mm. but um but but that's actually knowing that it's these people that are going to be yeah yeah. And, yeah and sometimes they sometimes they'll ad lib and we'll like change the whole thing and then but but also like you know um with people i feel like with this with especially the singers that are like really trust it's like in the process they can do they can kind of do whatever they want with it and it's like you know we're there and so we're like interacting with it mm -hmm. sometimes it's like please don't do that to it but then <laughs> most of the time it's like yeah you know mm -hmm. um we have a question from anna bacallis uh, uh she asks can you speak a bit about how the staging and theatrical elements played into the work uh was it always intended to be staged or did that all come later it was it was it was uh it was commissioned by the LA Phil and the and Beth Morrison Project for BAM. So it was commissioned to be, it was done, the first thing was supposed to be staged. And it was staged at BAM. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think that the, the, I have a hard, I still have a hard time with this. The writing of the piece was, like, I always want stuff to go off of. And I had a text, of course, but like, I, I just, I don't know, I really wanted to be able to see it first and understand how it was moving in space, but like, there was no production there. I had to write the piece first. So we would talk about it, but the, I mean, there's, you know, you can't be like, you can't talk about a set before it happens, really. And, you, and even if you do, you're not seeing it. You're not in it. And so, um, so I don't know. I mean, I think that more so certain changes happened after we started to build the, build the production. Hmm. Um, we did, I didn't, I wasn't quite finished when we started doing workshops. Of the piece, so there was, there was some of that. But um, yeah, more so what was interesting was the, um, you know, the, the instrumentation, there's 18 instruments and like um, it's originally supposed to be th 13 members of the LA Phil and then a, a, like another group of non-classic musicians who are five people. And um, these, there, there are two guys I've never worked with before, R.C. Williams and Braylon Lucy, um, who have, have been in Erykah Badu's band for like 20 years now. <laughs> And it was like such an incredible experience to work with them, but the the communication I mean the communication itself was great, but the like musical communication it was so interesting to figure <laughs> out how you know how to talk in, how to talk musically um, because because we, we I don't know we have, we have completely different ways of expressing ourselves musically and you know those guys are composers too and, you know. Sorry? I'm sure, like, just, like, rehearsal tradition, like, what you pay attention to, what you work on is probably a point of difference, too. Totally, totally. Also, like, like conductor, like, the idea of a conductor, and, not, and conducting music that has, like, a rhythm section is also, like, a very different kind of mm -hmm. 
vibes and like an LA Phil, like or like a, I should say like a, like an orchestral conductor. And the sense of time is very different, and how you communicate time, it's like everything is like everything is, is weird. <laughs> it's different, you know. It's weird to think of like the idea that that for a conductor to like um, communicate time by making sound is like so taboo in the orchestra world. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, I mean, really? Like, even like a breath or anything, it's like, that's just seen as like such weakness. Mm. But, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, I just sort of realized what time it is. We need to take a break. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to take like five minutes and then we're going to come back and talk about the hit show Nomadland. It's a weird <laughs> way to talk about it, but. Alrighty. Do you think, Daniel? <laughs>
Okay, and we're back to talk about Nomadland, the movie, the film, <laughs> the the critics' darling. Word. Yeah, <laughs> man. The not anime. <laughs> right, we've 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 branched out. <laughs> branched. Yeah. Well, oh, wow. I don't know. I mean, you were like, "What to talk about?" and it was like. Do can I do I have time to watch something cool? I don't the, know. I don't think I do because I <laughs> I like I I got I, like these kids in the I got kids in the teaching and the pre- trying to prepare a show. I was just like I I mean I watched Nomadland very recently and I was like this this is interesting and I'm it's 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 like uh it's it's posed questions. So it yeah. sounds like a cool mm-hmm. thing to talk about. I was like yeah, I've been wanting to watch it. Yeah, it's come up a few times in my orbits. So. Yeah. Um, let's let's watch the trailer, which I'm sure a lot of a lot of people have seen. Oh, okay. It'll it'll be a good reminder, I think, to people Great. what it's about. those lucky people that can travel anywhere. Yes, ma'am. I and they sometimes call you nomads. My mom says that you're homeless. Is that true? No, I'm not homeless. I'm just houseless. Not the same thing, right? No. My husband worked at the USG mine in Empire. I was a substitute teacher. It is a tough time right now. You may want to consider early retirement. I need work. I like work. Welcome to Badland Spa. What the nomads are doing is not that different than what the pioneers did. I think Fern's part of an American tradition. Oh, he's going to come right through the glass. My dad used to say, what's remembered lives. I maybe spent too much of my life just remembering. One of the things I love most about this life is that there's no final goodbye. I've met hundreds of people out here say a final goodbye let's just say I'll I'll see you down the road and I do I see them again and I can be certain in my heart I'll see you again well I do not like that trailer why? I've never seen that. Call him up. Tell him. No. <laughs> Guys, yo, this is bad. No, I mean... Um, it's a different cut than, yeah, some of what the movie's got. I mean, the soundtrack, so... It's like a, a cheap homily, but... I can see why they did it, but, I, you know, I but it is... And it's not it's not the most offensive thing, but just having seen the, the film, which is just the pace of it and the way the story is told, is, like, mm-hmm. pretty subtle in a lot of ways not every way but a lot of ways it's like that is not subtle and also just like i don't know i feel like the the thing one of the things i liked about it was the you know the way that the director chloe Zhao, right the way that the director like didn't um uh didn't really like spoon feed you a lot of like character information about anybody and and like you know this this character i mean you do you know, you do discover that her husband passed away. You do discover that she was she was laid off. But, you know, like she went to she was working as a temporary worker at Amazon and then just isn't working there anymore. And you just, you know, it like it, it doesn't like hold your hand through that. And you get these biographical like crumbs. And it's very that to me is very uh, I thought that was really nice. And just the, the that trailer was just like it was like, yeah, here I am. This is who I am. So, you know. Yeah, but it I guess you need much, that. It's, it's like a much slower process that you come to learn. Yeah, about this person, and also I think it's like Fern is her name. She is like 
you learn a lot just from how she moves actually in the in the work or how her face shifts through different emotions yeah which francis mcdormand is that the person mm-hmm. francis mcdormand yeah yeah just really well done of like minute small shifts in these close-ups i feel like they gave me a lot of like who fern was as opposed to even like the the biographical facts you learn um at the yeah. same time though i i thought i loved uh that um also like spoilers but like yeah just, uh-huh. but um how like you said when how she, i got the sense that she's you know kind of an unusual person but you know very comfortable with herself maybe not the situation um but it's not until you meet her sister and they start talking about how she was always kind of a like a different sort of braver person it's like most movies they would just say fern was different she was brave you know and it's not until much later in the arc that someone says it explicitly this this thing that you've been seeing this whole time and you know the small ways that she you know declines help but also searches for it and there's sort of like yeah 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 it's I found it, um, I found it to be like, I mean, I've, (laughs) uh, fun Tams, in fact, one of my, my biggest fears since when I was small is ending up homeless. Mm. Um, and so I was a little worried coming into this, that this would be very like, you know, uh, this this would spark a lot of that anxiety for me, but I felt that, um, you know, watching, watching this sort of bald face, both like, you know, people, people either surviving or, or choosing this lifestyle alongside the, the very tactile, like difficulties you know, of, of living in a van and living without a home. Like, I don't know, it kind of like it, I feel like it, it, it spoke, it's, it spoke in a very like nuanced way to this like old, old fear that I have. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was sort of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder, it, it, what you were saying reminded me of the scene where she goes to visit her sister and um, her sister's husband, and then all of their friends are there who are real estate yeah. people. Um, and it's like the one moment of real, maybe more like um, readable or like legible tensions, is that when, when she says... You know, they're talking about like, oh, like people should buy now, or they're saying something like very real estate. And then she goes like, you know, why are you telling people to spend their entire savings on something like that? And it's like this one moment of kind of a class critique, I think, or like a structural critique that's very like right there in in the piece. Yeah, I would say it's the one unsubtle class critique and the rest, yeah. of, the rest is like totally that's what the movie's about kind of. But but in another yeah. way, too, I wondered if it kind of it really changed something for me to know that she had family that was waiting for her in the case she actually needed a place. And actually to her love interest in the piece or someone who she just becomes connected to, he also has a story of like, he has children he could live with, but he decides to live in the van. And I wondered if that alters our sense of if this is actually a class critique or if this is more about people's proximity to or decision against wealth and although it kind of it doesn't change that she has a lot of him i i actually feel like it's more of this like meditation on grieving the place she's lost and the people she's lost as yeah. opposed to class actually because she if she wanted she had she has multiple opportunities to return to a life where her material 
needs are met. So I just wonder what we think of that, like how, because it changed a lot for me to know that. Um, they reject it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like they're, it's, yeah, they're, 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 they're homeless by choice. But the choice, but it's like, what is the, what is the choice? Choice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and like what, yeah. And she's, she's like, no, this is actually better to do this than, than the other thing to participate in this, in this way. Um, yeah. But I think it certainly is. I mean, it 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 it's, it really. I found it pretty. I found it a um, profound way of of depicting because it was subtle most of the part, yeah. most yeah, most yeah. of the time. I found it a profound way of depicting the way that um, workers are treated in the country, and yeah. and the way that you know, like the entire structure of care is now completely um, is completely. D- dilapidated you yeah. know her entire neighborhood is gone she's from that place because of you know because um the whole entire plant shut down and that obviously is a story that has happened so much yeah. and you know and and uh it i thought that something something about the rejection of the characters like is what the, the, i mean that her character and that david strathairn's character go through like that um that rejection like it it makes it harder for the it makes it harder for like the New York Times reading liberals to to like um come away feeling okay about it it's like a it's like it's a it's a it's a it's a complication you know but it but there are other ways I think where the where the where the film like speaks to those people in a way that's a little easy mm-hmm. and and I also I'm on the fence about that scene you talk about with the sister because I actually liked it when I saw it but then when I when I when I, when I thought about it, I didn't like how I was being manipulated or something, but it's like, but you, but you, but, but maybe you do need that moment of like, well, this is what life looks like somewhere else, you know, and let's just like strongly show it. But, um, yeah, well, you kind of, kind of yeah. lose sight, you know, you kind of lose sight of that. Um, and I actually felt like in the scene with like, when she's at her sister's place, like how big everything, all the spaces were. Yeah. Like shocking to me. Um, yeah. One thing, though, I wanted to bring up was that they do sort of frame it when she goes to, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like the, the, like encampment in Arizona with all those other, with all those other people yeah. and how they're like Santa Claus leader guy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I was glad that he didn't end up being like, I felt like there was going to be a twist where he was like a bad person. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, thing. okay. So, but here's another thing that like, I, w- I was talking to a friend of mine about this the other day, like, like point. the, wait, what'd you say? Finish my point. What? I was, I was just, I wasn't done with what I was saying. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I didn't, you know, we're very respectful and we're like, um, the conversation is, um, I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> You, yeah, sorry, I totally interrupted you, but it was I was like, yeah, let's just no, yeah, thank you, thank you for calling me out. <laughs> I was just, I was just gonna say that the sorry. way that, that the way that Santa Claus frames it is that you know these are a lot of people who have gotten close to or beyond the age of retirement and cannot live, you know, and they feel like they've been you know they've been totally failed. You know, and that they like, so that's like, yeah. you know, it's, you know, coming, it, it also complicates that idea of choice because it's also the situation that Fern is in to a certain extent, you know, she's had someone tell her to retire early, you know, and she's like, I can't survive. Like, right, 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 right. It was like, yeah, it's, it's like, it, it, yeah. And it complicates what, you know, yeah. What, what homelessness is and, and what poverty, poverty is and what, you know, like, because, yeah, what, what am I supposed to do? Like, well, go to a shelter, like go to, you know, that's what they said to the people in Echo Park, right? Well, well, we'll give you shelter. And it's like, that is like the worst possible. I mean, the, the shelter that they're providing is like, yeah, we're the state's providing shelter. It's like, no, you, that that's like nobody wants to go there. Like, and it's not, I mean, it's not safe. It's not healthy. And you don't get to leave your room after a certain, you know, I mean, it's like it's barely freedom at all. Right. And like, and, and yeah. Um, yeah, that's one thing that I found strange about the movie. There's like, um, because both the main, some of the main characters have a choice to, to leave that life. It seems like it kind of collapses this choice 
to the discourse that normally comes up when we talk about and particularly the word homeless as opposed to unhoused like how the cyst if you're thinking systematically people who are homeless are unhoused because the system has failed them but in this movie it feels like what's happened is it's an individual choice um to grieve in a way away from people and away from materials Mm -hmm. although you always have a choice to go back and i wondered if that if that weren't there would that have shifted really the ability for this movie to win awards if it really actually showed um this type of like um grit that and the direness of like no you don't actually have a choice um yeah but it but it's it's weird because I actually think this is probably the story of a lot of people in America. Um, Cause I, it's weird. Like my parents want to do this when they get older. Like they want to, they want to get one of the vans and like deck it out. And like, because of the movie. No, no, <laughs> this is like, honestly, it really is like, has become their obsession. Like there's, there's tons of YouTube videos on how to do this. Like, yeah. And I, I hadn't connected the fact that, um, this might be something that's actually kind of larger than just like my parents who want to do it. But like, um, I wondered what a movie would be like if it really stayed, um, demanding or uh, like kind of really, um, honed in on the fact that like, if this actually was your only choice, what new narrative or what new, um, arc has to happen because of that. Cause then you don't get, you can't have the moment with like family where you kind of could be reconciled or not. Yeah. Um, and we see that with one of the characters, what I forgot their name. It's like squeaky or oh, right. Yeah. I forget the person's name, but yeah, I forget too, but they put, they let's like, call her squeaky. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one where, she, you know, she ends up passing. She, she dies because of cancer and, her story is one that maybe is more of like a central central to this issue but it's kind of cast as the third or like the the train of the like in the middle of the arc you know it's like her passing and them having a funeral for her so yeah yeah time we don't we also don't know if she had someone to go to and one of her things is that she's like once she got that diagnosis she's like i'm not spending any more time in a yeah. hospital right. You know? right so that also is a choice at the same I yeah mean, same yeah same thing not a choice because like spending that much time in a hospital yeah. like most likely she couldn't afford spending that much time in a hospital right you know so it's it's a very uh it's a very nuanced sort of you know space for these these you know people who i'm sure you know, millions live in. Yeah. Yeah. The agency is super limited. I mean, that's what's interesting about the piece maybe is that it shows you continuums of like who gets to choose and who doesn't and what are you able to choose? But again, I keep coming back to this feeling that Fern's real issue is this kind of like grieving of a future she thought she had and one that was promised to her by the city called empire you know the one that was supposed to last and if we think about it as like also this piece is about whiteness in a way i wonder if that's also part of the melancholy of it is about this loss of like of uh, an assured future that you that you that you like have very clear in your mind you know and Mm -hmm that's some of what I feel she's grieving is like, wow, this isn't going to happen for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And actually I just remembered that pretty early on the, that friend that she runs into at the store is like, you can stay with us, you know? So she's, right, right. she's turning down being with people, you know, from, from the beginning, you know, and when that, being dependent on people, and being mm-hmm. dependent on people, she yeah. is social. Right. Right. But she doesn't want that. Yeah. Her friend helps her get jobs. But Yeah, I love her like, friend. Yeah. I don't remember what, it's like Beth or something like that. Or like yeah. 
I like her a lot. The two, some of my favorite moments are like the two of them, like riding around and like, yeah, the cart. Cart and it up. like I was like, ah, oh, I love, I don't know. I, I, I especially appreciate in movies, uh, scenes of friends of really like different age positions, mm. you know, who are like enjoying each other's company, like easily like yeah. that. You know, that like, oh, you whippersnapper, like, oh, you old lady or something like that. You know, it's like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I want to I want to see the. The um, I want to see the difference between like, because, you know, it's like Francis McDormand and David Strathairn and there's like a couple other actors and then everyone else is a non actor. Right. And that's her thing. The director she's the worst, worst mm. of non actors. And like, I want to see the. I wish I knew more or I could see the difference between the character that the, that the non-actors play and and them and like what, you know, because like the director's idea of what, you know, constitutes gravity in a character or like and how she is constructing the arc like is, I mean, you know, like who she's who she's selling into. I just want more information about like who those people are, because those choices like, seem interesting, like the space between the invention and the reality, you know, and. Mm. And you know that the guy who plays David Strathairn's son is David Strathairn's son, who is not oh, an really? actor. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> he's never been in a thing before. Interesting. Yeah, I but he had something. He was. I thought he was a good actor, actually. Like he had a. There, but he. But he, he. There was some depth there that didn't seem to like. You, we never learned. It didn't like pay off in his character or something. But no, it was yeah. Like, but but there was something there. And also the Santa Claus guy. Like and and I, honestly, I was thinking like maybe. Um, uh, this is what I was trying to interrupt with you. Sorry, but like the um, the the um, the Santa Claus guy, like maybe he was so noble in the movie, and like, but there's something in he's not an actor. Maybe he's not. Like maybe what mm-hmm. you were picking up on, you you were worried he was going to turn bad. Yeah. Maybe that's in his. Maybe he's not an actor, and he's like, and he is bad, <laughs> not bad. But like maybe there's something. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Simple. And like, and then it makes yeah. made me think about like, well, wh- you know, why is everyone so noble? You know, but of course it's, it's, I mean, there's lots of reasons why, and it's not like you need a villain, but, yeah. but this goes back to what Daniel was saying, just about portraying poverty, you know? Yeah. Hmm. I was just thinking, I was like, maybe it's just because I, I mean, didn't grow up going to church, but I always am mistrustful of anyone that's like a preacher position. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. He does kind of come as like, I, I think like in one of the YouTube videos, it's like, we're going to save like we'll give you tools to like save yourself or something yeah. from like <laughs> life on the road or something. yeah right no i mean he's very he's very evangelistic preacher risk preacher preacher risk yes and also yeah. like it's a finite time when you're with him and then you go off and do your thing as opposed to a communal living like when i th- when I, when she first went to arizona i thought with with this um group and where the santa claus guy is I was like, oh, she's going there to like live with a community. But it turns out that no, it's let's teach you how to do this and then individually head out on your own and we'll do this every year. Right. That's kind of like a it it maintains that individualism that maybe keeps us in these cycles of um like not thinking collectively, like just on all different levels of society, but yeah, and it's a Western and, kind of. I mean, not really, yeah. but kind of. It's like this American West sort of ideology in there set out. Yeah, yeah, but but the way that like the way that you learn that because I had the same thing. I was like, wait, where is she now? That's awesome, right? It's like the movie could have been so much more like gentler about like telling you how it was going to unfold, sure, and right. it was actually gentle in like lots of ways. Like there are no mean characters, you know, but like but the um. But yeah, it was it was like edgy in terms of like, wait, oh, this is this must be like two months later. We're in South Dakota, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and um, like, I found myself trying to count how many different jobs she had. Yeah, yeah. you know, being like, is that actually like, do people actually do that? Like, is that actually possible to? Yeah. To get you know jobs that quickly. And I, I, mean, th- I mean, I think yeah, mm-hmm. it was also that all the jobs she gets are like super different like none of them are the same but it made me think that in general labor is being so trivialized like 
especially the thing that just passed in California that's like Uber and Lyft can do whatever they want still. Oh my god. Like that Thanks, type, Kamala. <laughs> that type of thing is going to continue across the country, like that sort of um precarity. And that's why it, it made me think like these are just gigs, you know? Like these are just she's yeah. doing like what musicians do all the time. <laughs> like we yeah. just get, you know, you go to the next thing and you go to the space that has a job for you. Um Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, and the super brutal one with the at the at the potato harvest or whatever. I mean, yeah. God, and what you know, and yeah. I mean, yeah. I thought Francis McDormand is an amazing actor, and that whole sequence, and but but also it's like yeah, that's it, it was very realistic. I mean, people of course do that. They like yeah, they migrate to Idaho or whatever, and you know, I guess that was in Nebraska, but this bit, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, and, yeah, and, and there's these scenes. She's it's, she's doing like true manual, manual labor. labor yeah. Yeah, like, and then the idea that like she's working for a corporation and they have they they have zero responsibility to her, and that is like the Uber law. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, zero responsibility outside of like we will pay you hourly. Right. Yeah, and it was sort of a, a like that job was more shocking to me because I felt like I could see her sort of in her past life sitting in the office doing her HR job. Right. next to a yard that probably looked pretty similar yeah you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, yeah you know yeah like, her knowing so intimately the effects of like a company like that like just dropping everybody yeah. you know? but we should yeah. probably wrap up <laughs> we gotta wrap it up my kids right. are my kids are waiting for me in the yeah. playground and it's getting dark yeah, I know. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. A very dramatic silhouette you've got right now. Oh, yeah. I know. It's like the lighting is Slowly. amazing. In here. It's like, I don't know why. It's like not actually. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. But um, oh, thank you remember. for inviting me on. It is, I mean, it's so fun, you know, really, uh, really into into talking to you both about music. And um, yeah, thanks for coming best on. of luck with the future on. Hot Boy show. I hope that um, I hope that the audio is okay. Yeah. We'll figure that out. Yeah. You know, is your chat just full of people like nobody can hear any of you? <laughs> no, it's just it's just Anna. Sorry, but not, Anna yeah, just, okay. Cool. <laughs> going like, all right. If you all right. tell me, <laughs> if the audio is bad, we'll just all redub ourselves. <laughs> yes, I will definitely do that. Just just send me the send me the video. I'll, on our you know, very I'll it like simple weeks where nothing's going on, we can just okay. it. it'll be fine. <laughs> or we could, you know what, we could cast voice actors. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> and do a live video of their performance alongside <laughs> the video of our show. Yes, yes. This now is what thinking. I'm talking about. Minds. Okay, Gross. I'll talk to you later. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you.